The brain drain in Foxborough continues. Raiders head coach Josh McDaniels has hired Patriots wide receivers coach Mick Lombardi as Las Vegas' offensive coordinator. Joining them in Vegas is former Pats offensive, offensive line coach Carmen Brasillo, who will take the same job with the Raiders, plus former Pats assistant Bo Hardigree, who is the Raiders' new quarterbacks coach. Time now for the Ford Big Board, built for America, built Ford Proud. Here is a look at just some of the names to leave the Patriots' brain trust over the last few seasons. The list is long. In addition to McDaniels and Lombardi, you have front office executives like Dave Ziegler and Nick Casario. And, of course, there's Patriots lifers like Dante Scarnecchia and Ernie Adams. And you cannot forget the biggest noggin of them all, Tom Brady. In fact, Tom E. Curran wrote about this today on NBCSportsBoston.com about Bill Belichick's coaching plan, writing, quote, the coaching staff has gotten worse through attrition. There's always been a presumption that Bill has a plan, and I'm sure he does now, but is it one he designed or one he's being forced into on the fly, and is it a good one, end quote. And this is where we will begin our deep dive where the Patriots stand now that the football season is over. We got Phil Perry, we got Tommy Curran, and we have WEEI.com's Andy Harper. We're going to start with Curran. Curran, I read your article, and I feel like you tried to be fairly judicious with this without saying, Bill, you're in a real whole pile of mess. But it kind of feels like he is maybe taking on too much responsibility and not leaving him enough room to delegate enough, which could spell disaster. We don't know that yet, Trent, because it is, you know, Valentine's Day, he has time to hire people around him. But when we look at the general planning that Bill Belichick has engaged in over the first 15 years of his time with the Patriots, there was always a plan in place, a success, succession plan that you could obviously see. Now, there are fewer likely and obvious successions to come up in the pipeline. Additionally, they've never experienced attrition like they're experiencing over the last few years, ever. So to me, the plan is ambiguous. And Bill has always wanted to delegate, but it becomes more ambiguous on a coaching staff that, quite frankly, was poor for the last five games of the 2021 season. So I'm not real optimistic at the direction right now. Yeah, and, and Andy, adding to that ambiguity is the fact that Belichick keeps bringing back retreads, right? Like he brought back Matt Patricia, and now he's brought back Joe Judge, which some people think could be the guy to run the offense, even though Curran just interviewed Julian Edelman last week and said, I don't know if you want Joe Judge calling the plays. You don't have someone who's outwardly designated as your defensive coordinator. In your opinion, at some point, does Belichick need to decide, this is who's running my offense, this is who's running my defense, this is who's running my special teams? Yeah, to me, it looks like everything's just a little bit off. Like there's, I keep saying there's like one click or two clicks of the dial. And I feel like we'd all feel better. It's like, Matt, Patricia, you go back to coaching defense. We know you can coach defense. You did it pretty well here. Joe Judge, you go back to coaching special teams. We know you can coach special teams. You did it pretty well here. And then I think we could say, oh boy, Bill's going to have to cover up and, you know, fill some holes on offense. But right now you say, well, judges with offense. Patricia's in this vague Ernie Adams like role in the front office slash coaching. And we all forget that we started this off season worried about the defense. And right now the defense feels like it's the most settled aspect of the team, even though we were talking about too many voices and no coordinator. So I like what Tom is saying. Okay. It's early. You know, as Bill would say, oh, I checked the calendar. looks like we don't have a practice <laughs> for about two months. looks like we don't have a game until September. But right now, when you just look at the way it's made up and the roles that we know have sort of been assigned or labeled, I don't know how you can be confident in this setup. At Phil, all. you're not as pessimistic, though. You seem to think that, though many of us look at what's happening and just assume, and we're going to stick with the offensive side of the ball here, that Joe Judge and some collaboration of others along with Bill Belichick are going to run things. But you feel like mm, maybe we shouldn't count out somebody like Bill O'Brien or an Adam Gase quite yet. Yeah, I wouldn't rule that out. I think there is still plenty of time to be able to do something like that, although the sooner the better on an addition as far as that goes because you want that person to be able, whoever it is, to be able to start working with Mac Jones and planning whatever it is this offseason and being part of the offseason plan in terms of additions to the team and what that plan will look like on that side of the ball. So I'm not ruling out a more experienced coordinator to me and just from people that I've spoken to around the league – it's, it's almost unfathomable that Joe Judge would be running the offense. He's never coached the quarterback position. He's never called plays 
offensively. And again, I bring this up to coaches in other areas, and they say, well, no way. That, it can't be that. Mm -hmm. So they have to figure out something else. They also will acknowledge, though, Trenny, that Bill Belichick does what Bill Belichick wants to do. And so who knows as far as that goes. But I still would, if I'm a Patriots fan, be looking at Bill O'Brien or Adam Gase or even somebody in-house like, like Nick Cayley. And, and I would be looking at those guys as the guy to be running the show, quote-unquote, offensively, rather than somebody like Judge or Patricia. Here's my misgiving on all of this. We presume the Patriots would have an airtight succession plan to take care of Tom Brady's departure. They really didn't. God bless him, Mac Jones came to them. Whether that's grand design or good luck, I don't know. But now that they have him, they have a more than competent rookie quarterback, excuse me, second-year quarterback on his rookie contract. Now there's so much ambiguity around the offense. They've lost the best coordinator on either side of the ball in the game in Josh McDaniels. So what are they going to do to shore that up? I'm not saying that Carmen Brasillo and Mick Lombardi are the second coming of any great coaching pair, but... That's more attrition. Ivan Fears may retire. More attrition. Dante Scarnecchia, one of the greatest assistants of all time, out the door. Meanwhile, you didn't force a punt during the playoff game. You barely forced a punt. I don't know if they forced a punt in the other preseason game. The, the playoff game blotted out the uh, final right regular there. season game against the Bills. So, to me, it's okay to say Bill has a plan, but when you have a team that's gone 21 and 22 since Halloween of 20 to 2019, I'm not sure this is an, as airtight and a certainty that Bill Belichick has a plan as we all presume it to can be. I, can I just jump in? I don't 100%. know. I don't know what the plan is, Tom. And I think to your point, I think he's having to adjust on the fly because who plans to lose five assistants in one offseason? I'm, I'm sure uh, they that all wasn't should the when you're that in. good. I mean, you know the teams are going to sniff around Josh McDaniels every single year. A couple of years ago, they right. didn't have a plan for him. So they say, Josh, before you get on the plane to Indianapolis, can you come in here for a minute? We're going to talk to you about this. Will you stay? Will you make yourself look like a buffoon in front of the entire league just so, because we don't have a succession plan for you? And he did. And he's fortunate that he got another job down the road. It's, but it's it, also hard to force guys into that role, though, Tom. Like, are you going to force Mick Lombardi into being ready to be an offensive coordinator? I, sometimes you just you have the guys you have, and they're either ready or they're not. And maybe some of these guys are ready. But I, I just think if you can adjust on the fly and land somebody like Bill O'Brien, that'd be a success at the end of the day. Well, guys, let's uh, be honest and hope that this is not part of Bill Belichick's coaching plan. Respected ESPN Patriots reporter Mike Reese writing this yesterday. The possibility of Patricia joining the offensive staff in some capacity has come up in conversations with smart NFL personnel projecting Belichick's next move. And the thinking goes like this. With the Patriots set to retain the core of their existing defensive staff, but losing elite institutional brain power slash knowledge on offense without McDaniels and others, Belichick might view some combination of Patricia and Judge as his best option to spearhead the offensive transition, Andy Hart. Say it ain't so. Like, this does not seem to what Curran and, and Phil are pointing to. I know you have to adjust on the fly, but this does not seem like a net positive adjustment. I don't know if it's a, a net negative. I, I hate this less than I hate Joe Judge. I guess that's how I would describe it. Joe Judge running the offense, zero sense to me. Matt Patricia, a little bit of sense. I actually brought this up on our station probably three weeks ago, and I'll admit a former tight end, an offensive NFL player named Christian Fourier laughed me out of the room when I brought it up on the air. But the way Bill thinks and just looks at even players, you know, how can I make use of this guy's skills, put him in the best position, us in the best position, just make good. Patricia's a guy, has coached on offense, was an assistant offensive line coach, has called plays in the NFL. And when you call plays on defense, I think part of that job is thinking about what the offense is doing, what the flow of the game is offensively, your opponent. So I'm not saying it's ideal. I'm not saying I'd want to hand over my franchise quarterback year two to Matt Patricia, a defensive coordinator who's never coached, you know, called plays at an, at an NFL level. Uh, but if I was, you know, break glass in case of emergency, it's a little higher on my list than Joe Judge. Why, the, the point that I'm trying to make in all this is why is it an emergency? You know, 2003 and 2004, I think that's when last Matt Patricia was coaching offense. And really, since yep. the AFC Championship game in 2017, Matt Patricia has barely done a thing right. They, they lost the Super Bowl in which they allowed 41 points. They almost got beat by Blake Gabbert, whatever the hell his name is. I lost his name. Bortles. Then he goes and drives the Cleveland, excuse me, Detroit franchise onto the rocks. He comes back here. I'm not sure exactly what he's done. Why would he be rewarded with being in charge of anything having to do with future success? I don't get it. 
To me, one thing, Phil, that unnerves me is the boomeranging of Patriots' failed head coaches who come back here, and then the Patriots hire them in these ambiguous roles so that they don't really have to pay them so that they can continue to collect from the places that fired them. So the offset is minimal because they're not offensive coordinator or defensive coordinator. It just seems very unimaginative. <laughs> well, it is consistent. It's consistent when it comes to their emphasis on value, right? Uh, I just I look at it and I say they, they've just lost so many guys again I don't know what the pipeline situation is here how they can make sure that thing remains stocked but even you know assistants like Jerry Shaplinsky mm -hmm. and Chad Osh I mean they've all moved on so the Josh McDaniels of the world that spent their entire career with the Patriots from the time they were out of college and they get all the way to whatever it is their late 20s early 30s and then they can become a coordinator well those guys at, at the lower levels those you know maybe younger Josh McDaniels is are getting plucked and they're going elsewhere. So I don't know what the right answer is. I will say this really quickly. I, I would like to think that Bill Belichick keeps an eye on what's going on on other teams that has sort of a running list of guys, knowing how his coveted his coaches are to replace people. And if he doesn't, that seems professionally negligent because then they're in this situation where they're thinking about Joe Judge and Matt Patricia.